G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video. Second one this week, as usual, that's usually the schedule I like and it's a little bit more of a classic video as opposed to the sort of novelty type video I had on Monday, but here we go. So have a look at the grid there, I'm the highest Australian up the grid, four Aussies at the back of the pack and then me in ninth. So this is a bit more of a classic combination, it's race C, so a bit of strategy is involved here and we're at Circuit de Barcelona Catalonia Grand Prix layout. Bit of a mouthful, bit of a long name, but everyone just calls it Catalonia. It's um, the Formula One test track, so it includes that chicane rack turns 14 and 15, which we just went through there, thankfully, after the, uh, thankfully before we actually started the races. Absolutely kills your momentum if you start on that chicane, but it's alright, we get through the final corner nicely on the straight. At least we're still in the slipstream with the Porsche up ahead. So, in, in tone with the Formula One sort of relations to this track, I've gone for a Petronas liveried Mercedes AMG. Wonder where I got that from. No points for guessing. In hope to, you know, channel that. Hopefully get a victory here. But we are here for 11 laps at Catalonia. We're going to follow most of the race at least. As this was actually an interesting one. So let's follow lap one action. Look at the pack here. It's about seven cars all in sort of half of, all, all, all sort of in a set within a second of each other. I think the leaders streaked away a bit, which is probably expected. But <laughs> look at that. There's about four wide in the middle of turn five there. So <laughs> you can kind of see how kind of see how easy it is to lose time to the leader here. It's sort of more like eight cars. There's a few cars behind me too. Although, have a look at if we moved up the inside of the Honda at turn nine. Doesn't quite end nicely. Sort of a bit awkward. I probably didn't give him enough room on the outside. He probably turned in a little bit early. But <laughs> I'll kind of take the blame for that. It's not a good overtaking opportunity there. But um, you see it results in a two second penalty. So while I've been talking here, it's a bit of action. Porsche has just fallen out of the back of the pack up ahead now, and now I'm sort of hemmed in behind now. Obviously I've got this penalty now, so I want to try and get ahead as far as I can before the penalty gates, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen. But we got this massive straight here at Catalonia, so hopefully we can slipstream past a couple of people and gain a couple of positions before turn one. So, oh, it's all kicked off up ahead. We've got a Mercedes turned around and bins it on the curb, uh, bins it in the gravel on the outside. Look at this, I'm up the inside of two, and then up the inside of the Porsche here. Oh my goodness, that's like four positions in one corner and half a straight. My goodness. But I probably should go defensive here, but I didn't this particular time. Just spot the braking point and brake nicely towards turn one. Yep, we're set in there nicely, and that's us up into fourth from ninth on the grid within one lap. Although we do have this two second penalty to worry about. So we're going to serve that on the way out of turn nine, which is camps up. Um, so we're going to, yeah, there's a penalty gate on that little straight up here. But you can see the interesting sort of layout of Catalonia. It's a really compact circuit, so it packs a lot of distance into a small surface area, if that makes sense. So you see the track sort of folds on itself a couple of times. So um, it's a good test track as well. So that's why Formula One uses it. It's got long straights. Two, oh, it's got a long straight and flowing section, mid speed sector, and then a very low speed final sector. So you can kind of test cars at different intervals as well. We've got massive straights, sort of mid length straights, short straights, switch back left right corners, a really tight chicane. So it's all sorts, all sorts going on here. We're going to serve this two, two second penalty now. Two cars, three cars overtake. Let's see. Is that fourth car. No, he doesn't. He doesn't really go for that move either, although I do slide wide at turn 10. But I'll get on the power nice and early there, so that's that position defended. So thankfully the penalty gates are along that sort of short straight. It's sort of more than halfway down the straight as well. So you don't lose as much time as you would, say, at Nürburgring, where it's at the start of a two-kilometre straight, and you lose time all the way down. You get lunged by the Peugeot here, but he absolutely makes a mess of it on that first kerb and managed to get the momentum through the second part of that chicane to be able to retain that position there. So we're 2.2 seconds off the guy currently ahead of us, so it's sort of, you know, not in slipstream, obviously. So strategy now, let's look down at the fuel. So we've got 11 laps, and we've got about seven laps of fuel remaining. So my, at this point, my thought was, well, let's go for a pit stop at the end of lap six to get the sort of long stint out of the way. So. Hopefully that comes to fruition. 
So we're going to follow through turn three now, a very couple of long corners. So turns one and two, a little chicane called Elf, and then we've got turn three, Renault, and then this is turn four, Repsol, and then we go down the hill and the exit of Repsol towards Say It, turn five. Have a look through here. Very easy to go deep there, as there's not really much on the edge of the track to use as a braking point, but when you get that right, it feels really good. Like, really good. And then we've got another switchback chicane as well called Verth. Turn 7 and 8. Don't quite... Turn 8 really lures you to take that curb on the as you come off turn 7, but um, penalty central there. Basically, think of it like Mario Kart. There's an item box, and every I there's an item box on that curb. Every time you hit the item box, your item is a penalty. Half a second penalty that you've got to serve on the next lap, because it's not quite, not quite further... Not quite far enough before the penalty gates that you can serve it on the same lap. Then we've got turn 12 there, that's Benk de Sabadell, very low speed arc corner. Then we've got turn 13, Europe car, and then we've got the chicane rack, turns 14, 15. Have a look through this course of the lap, we've actually caught up a lot of ground to this guy up ahead. So remember we were like 2.3 seconds behind, we're now 1.2 seconds. So we've still got about 6 laps of fuel remaining. So. At this point here, I looked at the red number, 13.3 seconds ahead, so keep an eye on that number there as we head towards turn 1. Very difficult, sort of, this track's cool, I do like Catalonia actually, I feel like I can get around the track okay, but in terms of breaking points, it's really hard to spot breaking points around this track, there's not much going on on the outsides to, obviously it's not as hard as, say, like Autopolis, which is notoriously hard, or um, Goodwood, which is hard as well, but in terms of stuff going on, it's hard to spot your breaking points here, especially this corner here, there's just nothing, no breaking boards or anything, so you see me repeatedly go deep into turn 5, say it, there, so we're always going to, well, every time we go deep, we're going to lose time, obviously, you can see we're about 14 seconds off the lead, so we've started to lose a little bit of time in this lap as well, so... Um, Hopefully we can get it back in the pit stops, but I don't think I'm fuel saving at this point. And that's Kemp's at turn 9, very easy to turn him way too late. But it's also very easy to turn him way too early. So this track sort of tests in different sort of aspects. It tests your car, tests tyres, uh, it tests your ability as a driver. So that's turn 10, that's Lakosha, turn 10. And um, it's very, also very easy to run deep as well, but that does have a breaking point that I'll use. Probably go through a lap a bit later when it gets a bit lonely here, but let's just keep an eye on this battle up ahead. So the Lamborghini throughout this lap has actually got ahead of this Porsche here, so they're about nine tenths ahead of me now, and um, going under the straight, that's always good, that's within slipstream. Porsche just gets a little bit out of shape on the final corner, look at that, right up to the edge of that kerb there. Is that result in a penalty for him? I probably wouldn't want to try that out myself, but I think he manages to get away with the penalty unscathed going in towards turn one it's actually probably one of the best overtaking opportunities considering it's at the end of a long straight we were in the slipstream of that Porsche but the Porsche was in turn in slipstream of the Lamborghini so um, I wasn't able to gain as much as I could have that Porsche isn't that great in a straight line but thank goodness for him that he had the slipstream of that Lamborghini up ahead so the leaders are gone absolutely no way of getting the leaders again so um, we're going to just focus on our little pack here, on our little battle, and of course actually the guy behind is about half a second behind, so we can't completely discount him out of the picture now. We actually get close to the apex of turn 5 this time, that's a bit better than normal. See, we actually keep sort of an even sort of gap after that corner there, so not, not, no one's really making any big moves yet, which is good, it's a long race, we've still got over halfway of it still got over half the race to go, sorry, so um, you don't want to go hell for leather for position so early because you might lose them at the end of the race, especially in the nature of these race C's, you've got fuel and tyres to worry about, so uh, actually Porsche just goes off the track on the exit of Akasha as well, probably just getting on the power a little bit too early, which is very easy to do through there, because you sharp corners of nature of a racing drive, you want to get on the power as early as possible. Slide really wide through a Europe car, actually, that's going very deep. Sort of a weird elevation change, and we've got this really tight, awkward chicane, and we actually get half a second of penalties. That will be from going off the edge of the track through turn 
on the exit of turn 13 by going in there a little bit too hot. Of course, it's another corner where you can't spot braking points, but it's all right. Up into six on lap six. So this is going to be my in lap now. Four laps to go, so... Um, of course, strategy, talk strategy as well, so 11 laps, exactly halfway is 5.5, so you can go in on the end of lap 5 or the end of lap 6, and nobody went into the pits there, nobody ahead went into the pits in the end of lap 5, so I thought, you know, you're obviously going for the overcut, it's obviously the fastest way, get the most worn your tyres are, out of the way, um, and halfway through the race, rather than at the end, where you're going to try and make up positions as you get close to people at the end, you don't want to have those extremely worn tyres. So, I thought everyone's going to go into the end of lap 6, but lingering in the back of my mind, is the race a no-stop? That's the question, because if you have a look at my tyre wear, it's actually not that bad. And fuel, we've got, what's that, five laps to go, five and a half laps to go, we've got three, close to four laps worth of fuel. And if you remember at the start we had, or we were on lap four, or lap lap three or something, we had about 6.5 laps of fuel. So all things considered, it is sort of looking at this point that it could be a no-stop, but we're going to see at the end of this lap here, actually the lead is going into the chicane rack right now, so we're going to see, does he peel into the pits? If he doesn't, we might be in trouble because I haven't been fuel saving at all, and actually, he actually misses the pits altogether. So at this point, I was like, well, well shit. This is a no-stop, isn't it? And if you look at my fuel, I've got three, three and a half laps of fuel remaining. We've still got, like, six laps of the race to go. So, I was in the weeds at this point, but, you know what? Let's try our best. Let's see if we can get to the end. So, I'm going to monitor this fuel all the way to the end. And hopefully, we can avoid the pits, because I didn't do any research and do any practice. Well, I did a little bit of practice, got a qualifying time, but I did no research in the combination. Didn't really ask or find where anyone asked what the strategy is. Didn't really watch anyone on YouTube here to see what the strategy was, so I just jumped straight in and just hoped it was a classic pit halfway and then get the car home. But I, everyone's missed the pits, and we're on lap seven, more than halfway. So if you're gonna go for a pit stop, you wanna do it about halfway. You wanna do it either exactly halfway on an even lap, on an even lap number race, or either, um, the lap before or lap, lap, lap after on an odd number lap race. But as you can see, we're past the pit window. That if it would be a a, um, no, a one stop race, so yeah, definitely no stop. So let's follow the next few laps on my efforts at fuel saving. So the car I've gone for, Mercedes. Actually, let's quickly talk about that. It's the Mercedes AMG GT GT3. Bit of a mouthful, but you know that's obviously what like what PD like to do. Massive car names for no reason, I guess. It's actually a real life GT3 car, so um, it's based on a real car with 613 horsepower, so it's a bit of a monster. And as with any other Group 3 car, you can buy it for 450,000 credits. So the Mercedes, it's a good all rounder car, so you can kind of do a lot with it. So um, obviously, it's good. It's Good in a straight line, good around corners, nice and stable, no turbo, so there's not, you don't won't have to worry about oversteer too much. Good amount of downforce, good test of downforce is a final corner here, that's turn 16 called New Holland, although I think they call it, like they call it, call it Catalonia, and then when they're doing motorcycle GP, but I don't know, no clue, I don't have a clue. All I know is that they called it New Holland on the website I looked at, so that's what it's called for me. But that's a good test of downforce, if you get the corner nailed, it's flat out, but um, obviously if your car has more downforce it's going to be flat out no matter whether you nail it or not but we continue on so we're going to have a look at my fuel saving efforts now so that's turn three you can get on the power really early although you're turning while getting on the power so that's a recipe for killing your rear outside tyre but we are messing with the fuel maps quite a lot so we've got two laps of fuel to go and we've got just under four laps so we've got to try and double the distance we get on fuel now, so see through slower corners, I go up to high fuel maps, but then on the exit, I'll go to lower fuel maps to get good launch off the corners. I'm also trying to defend from this guy in seventh as well. So a little bit wide through turn seven, and then we go up the little straight towards turn nine. Still in fuel map two, so this is the sort of fastest part of the circuit compared to the other parts. But you'll see as we enter the final sector, we'll whack that fuel mix way up. 
So obviously that puts it to a lean, puts the engine into a leaner setting, so it uses less fuel. But of course, that's there's power deficits. You can't just whack it into lean mix six and then um, win. So early in the race, you might have noticed we were actually gaining on the leader, but we began to drop off a little bit later as I think we began to realise that it might have been a no-stop. We actually got a nice run through Europe car that's that time and into the chicane. First gear, slide it through the first part. You see the time of day makes the shadows, you can really see the shadows around your car going through that final sector. So you can see the cars that are swerving behind you as its shadow floats across the track. We go down the straight, still in lean mix two. So we've got 1.5 laps of fuel remaining. We've got still three laps to go. So we've still got to double the fuel. So we've not really made any gains in terms of fuel as well. We've still got to double the fuel. So we're probably using as much fuel as we should if we're going through the whole race fuel saving, but we've still got to double the amount. So we're really not getting anywhere in terms of fuel. As at this point here, I've got to um, save as much fuel as I do to keep the car going or use as much fuel, sorry, to keep the car going, but then save a little bit more each lap to be able to get it to the end, as at this point it's not looking good. 1.3 laps worth of fuel to go, and we've still got over two laps to go. So I've really, I've really ruined the strategy for this race, but if worst comes to worst, the absolute, the most stupidest thing to do is to drive past the pits when you know you're not going to be able to make it. So if worst comes to worst, we're going to have to drive into the pits now. It's a Porsche fuel saving a lot. This Porsche gets a bit of an overlap on the way through Verth, but I'm up, I'm on the inside for turn 9. Gonna, gonna be able to keep this position. Yes, I just slide in ahead. Porsche just keeps it on the track. That is a successfully defended position. I think there was a little bit of a tap. I got an SR down warning, but we keep it narrow for Lakaisha. So hopefully we keep positions here. Yes, we do. On the power, nice and early, but a little bit of oversteer moment on the exit of the corner. Obviously very hard to avoid oversteer or correct oversteer rather when you're on a controller, keep it nice and narrow through turn 12 and then on the outside curb down into turn 13, we've got 0.9 laps of fuel remaining, we've still got two laps to go, so <laughs> not again, not really made any gains, but drive past the pits again, hopefully we can get, hopefully we can get to the end here, we've whacked it into fuel mix 5, so they're a second behind, they will gain down the straight, not worried about that, we've just got to be able to get this car home without going into the pits. And fuel mix six down the straight. See the speed deficit, 240 k's an hour, not even 240 before the braking point. And we get absolutely lunged by that Porsche, an absolute ridiculous lunge, he ends up off the track. Does that result? Yes, it does. Oh my goodness, what an idiot. <laughs> oh my goodness, so he's lunged me, he's crashed into the side of me, and then driven off the track, given me a two second penalty, even though I'm fuel saving massively. If he was tactful and smart, he would have found a way to get past because I'm fuel saving. Could have just caught up to me throughout the lap, slipstream past on straight. So 0.6 laps remaining. 5% of fuel to do over one and a half laps. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. This entire lap so far has been in fuel, fuel mix 6. So it's an absolute maximum fuel saving. I'm probably revving the car a little bit too much, but in terms of fuel saving, it's about as heavily fuel saving in this car that I can do without losing too much speed as I'm trying to defend this sixth position at the same time. But I think it's in futility. We'll probably not be able to keep this position at all as we serve the two seconds, lose two, three, yep, three positions. So in the back of this, back of the sort of train I've formed now, I'm, the, I'm now the caboose instead of the engine. But um, we're, have a look down at the fuel, 4% of fuel, so we were at 9% at the start of the lap, so that's 5% I used in one lap in fuel setting 6, compared to what we got now, 3%, and we've still got a lap to go, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it, yellow flags are out momentarily, someone's binned it on the chicane, I don't think it's going to result in anything yet, there's someone trying to get going, but if you have a look, 3%, I think I'm just going to have to take what I know is coming, I'm going to have to peel into the pits, absolute Oh man, spent the entire race avoiding it, and look at the deficit, it's like, what are those, what do those represent, 10%, about 7% too short to get to the end of the race, if I had 10%, or if, even if I had 9% of fuel right now, I probably would have gone around again, and probably made it home, but I've spent the entire, or half the race trying to avoid this, and look at that, I was stationary for about half a second, Absolute ridiculous pit stop. Didn't even change tyres, but now I've got 1.4 laps of fuel, so I'm going to go hell for leather. 
fast forward this final lap here, try and just get to the end of the race now. So that really hasn't gone well at all. So moral of the story is always check the strategy. So really, Kudos Prime publishes the combinations a good few days before they actually are on, I think. The best thing, the best way to sort of learn a combination is to look at the multipliers and the number of laps and think, oh, that means this many laps or that sort of thing. But I haven't gotten that far into learning everything yet, but see there we bring it home in ninth, which is where I started. So the race was actually a waste of time. So after all that, it turns out it wasn't worth it and the Petronas Mercedes did absolutely nothing for me. But I will say we did have a couple more races around there and that'll be in the next video on Monday. So keep an eye out for that and hopefully we can have a better run that time. But as far as this video goes, that's going to be it. So do hit that like button to let me know you enjoyed and hit that subscribe button to see amazing videos like this in your subscription box every week. But that's going to be the end of the video today and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.